like we go Move out the way, please don't be a hero Bling, blow, ooh, she no skateboard P Bling, blow, ooh, she no skateboard P Yeah, going eight like we go I'm chewing ice That's all I want right now My iron is low I've been on iron pills, but I was eating ice so much that now I crave it. You know that ice taste, the freezer ice taste? Ah, oh, so good. Anyway, hi pearls. <laughs> it's Diana. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome to my channel. Glad to have you. So today I thought I'd do a video that you've probably seen before. Get to know me. Only I decided that I didn't, I'm sorry if I'm out of breath, it's a pregnant thing, I'm sorry. I'm like trying to get comfortable. I literally got my feet up, I have an ottoman down here. I got my feet up. I did my hair for y'all today. No more mom bun. I actually did a little, a little bit of makeup and everything. But anyway, I didn't want to do one of those get to know me videos with all the little lame, well, I won't call them lame. They're not lame. All the basic <laughs> questions. I wanted to do some questions that were a little more in depth that would actually give you some insight into the way my mind thinks, I guess. I mean, they're not that deep, but they're deeper than, uh, I could think my camera shifted. You can see my albums on the wall. Anyway. They're deep enough that they're not like a, the kind of questions you'll see on any tags. I like really did research to find some good questions to ask that I wouldn't mind answering. So I have all of them here on my phone, ready to ask. I even put notes on my answers because pregnancy brain is a thing. <laughs> I used to make fun, well not make fun, but I used to side-eye people who use the pregnancy brain excuse but let me tell y'all it is a thing it is real when you're pregnant it literally shrinks your brain and you forget everything you forget everything you do weird things <laughs> like i think the weirdest thing i've done on pregnancy brain is i was making myself um actually it, it's my what I eat in a week breakfast edition, my vegan breakfast meals. I made that that parfait, the yogurt parfait, which was I think the first thing in that video. And all of the trash and scraps I meant to put in the trash, along with the, the empty yogurt cups, I put them back in the refrigerator. I put trash in the refrigerator. And I didn't realize it until an hour later when I came back to the fridge to get something to eat. So yes, pregnancy brain is real. So I put notes on the answers to my questions because there's certain things I want, I want to not forget to say. So anyway, let's jump right in. The first question is one that will answer a question that vegans get all the time. Some of these questions are so stupid like this stuff is never gonna happen but people just you know it's their defense mechanism so whatever i'll answer it so the question is if you could take only three items with you to a deserted island what would they be so the first thing i would take is something that's going to combat those dumb questions about what would you do if you were stranded on a Deserted island, would you still eat meat then? No. I would bring a plethora of organic seeds, vegetable seeds that could thrive on an island so I could have a garden and eat to my heart's content my vegan food. I would also like eat seaweed and what other ocean plants are edible as well? Coconuts and anything else that's already on the island. That's what I would eat, but I would bring my seeds so that as long as I had to be on this deserted island, I could grow my food. So that's number one. Number two, I would bring a radio or a, a phone with 
solar power charger <laughs> so that I could play my music because I, I need to hear music. I love music. If I was on a deserted island and I had nothing to listen to, I would probably go insane. There's only so much quiet and relaxation and birds and waves that you could listen to before you would probably lose your mind. So that's the second thing. The third thing I would bring is my husband. <laughs> so I won't be lonely. And we could live there and make a little home and have lots of babies and have our own little Peralta Island. <laughs> so that's the first one. The next question is, if I had to choose to live without one of my five senses, which one would I give up? And I said, I think that I would give up taste. And the reason I would give up taste is because then I would have zero excuse not to eat to um, live instead of live to eat. I could eat everything on this earth that is healthy for your body, full of vitamins and minerals, whether it's nasty or not, because I won't be able to taste it. I would still be able to smell. I know smell and taste go hand in hand. And I think I would get the satisfaction from the scent um, to counteract not being able to taste it. But I do like the idea of being able to, I probably would become a raw vegan if I didn't have taste because I would, I would just eat <laughs> vegetables, fruit, all that all day long and be fine with it because I know even though I can't taste it, my body is going to be healthy. Um, make sure I didn't leave anything out. Yeah, okay, so. Next question is, what is your greatest failure and how did you overcome it? Uh, I think my greatest failure was when I stopped loving myself. There was a time in my life, several years ago, where I had just slipped into this depression and I wasn't taking care of myself, I wasn't eating healthy, I was at my highest weight, I was 220 pounds, it might not have looked like it, but I was, um, and I was just sad. I was sad all the time, and I just wasn't very good to myself. So uh, how I overcame it was... I started taking better care of myself, I started eating right, I, um, I went on this little journey with my dad, we both were at our highest weight at the time, and we decided that we were going to lose weight together, so we did what was called the blood type diet, and if you follow my blog, I actually touched on some of this in my um, Yes I Am Vegan post, but we did the blood type diet together and this was actually the catalyst to my ending up going vegan because during that journey is when I started learning about veganism. But we did that diet together and I ended up losing, just from the diet change alone, excuse me, the lifestyle change alone, um, I lost 30 pounds and my dad lost 50 pounds. Then I added exercise into the mix. Um, and exercise actually helped me as well. It was a means to clear my mind and I ended up losing a total of 41 pounds. Um, and I felt more like myself. I liked how I looked in the mirror. I loved how my clothes were fitting me. So my visual self-love was coming back and through the exercise and really starting to take care of myself and also starting to read more um, books on mindset and things like that, like Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Um, I also read a lot of other books, um, but in doing all of those things, not only did I work on my appearance, I worked on my mind and I worked on the inner health of my body. I began to come out of that depression and end up loving myself again and still to this day take care of and love myself and it was a very unique thing to go through. I'm sure a lot of people go through that 
you know, society puts so many pressures on you that you you can easily begin to think that you're not good enough, but you are. And your worth is not in your worth is not found in any other person or thing. Your worth is found in yourself. If you want to be happy, you have to make yourself happy. You can't rely on someone else to do it. You can't rely on something else to do it. Food's not going to make you happy if, if that's what you're using to medicate yourself. Uh, a relationship is not going to make you happy if that's what you're using to medicate yourself. You have to find it within and turn yourself around. Because if you choose to be happy, then you're going to be happy. And if you choose not to be happy, you're not going to be happy. Okay, so I kind of went on a tangent, but yes, that was my greatest failure to myself and how I overcame it. Um, next question. If I could master one skill that I don't have right now, what would it be? It would be carpentry. Uh, I went to school for interior design at Florida State University. I graduated with my bachelor's of science in interior design. Um, and even when I was going through school, I always wanted to get into furniture design. And while I have so many furniture design ideas in my head, <laughs> I've, I've never really been able to make them come to fruition. Uh, I probably could hire someone to make them for me, but I always wanted to do it myself. But I never got all around to learning how to actually make furniture. Like I've made things in the past, like little easy projects. Like for instance, this bench that this plant's sitting on. You also will see it. I don't know which video I'm going to post first, this one or my baby shower. but. It's under the backdrop of uh, in my baby shower. It's the bench that everyone sits in front of to take a picture. But I made this bench and I've made some other things, but I've never made like an elaborate piece. So maybe one day I still might make that happen. Uh, maybe take some carpentry classes and learn some woodworking. But it won't be until we get a house. We're in an apartment right now. We're actually about to move here in the next month. I actually should be packing, but um, you know whatever but yes that that is still something that I would love to do so so the next question is if you could have one superpower what would it be and if I could have any superpower I would probably pick invisible invisibility I think it would be pretty cool to just disappear only if I disappear whatever I'm holding, touching, or wearing disappears with me. Because you know in the movies, whenever someone disappears, they come back. When they reappear, they're like naked. No, my clothes will stay because whatever's on me <laughs> will disappear with me and stay with me as well. So yes, invisibility. I think that would be cool. Yeah, I'm going with that one. If it wasn't invisibility, it would be the ability to fly. Because I think being able to fly would be pretty cool too. So the next one, I accidentally closed out of it, so now I have to scroll again. What's the best concert you've ever been to? This is subject to change in August because I'm going to see the On The Run tour. <laughs> and I love Beyonce and it's probably going to change my life. But as of now, the, my favorite concert that I ever been to was Jill Scott. I went to that concert with my friend Sharice and we had a wonderful time and the music was beautiful. It was an intimate setting and one of the things I love about Jill Scott is her attention to the music. Like. I can appreciate that being a band geek. You know, I was in band for all of high school and, and middle school, and I was in the marching 100 in college, and my musical ear is just part of me. And uh, she shows such appreciation for music that you just feel it, and you feel it in her energy when she's on stage. and the love and respect she shows for her musicians, her band. Like she, she gave each of them a solo and 
you could just see her really vibing and appreciating their music. Like the whole, the whole setup was just awesome. It was beautiful and I loved it. And I've been to concerts, I've been to several concerts and there was just something about that one that just, ugh, just the music just, ugh, just hits you in a certain way. So that's my favorite concert. The next one is, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? If I could change anything, I would have a slightly more A-type personality. I am very much a laid back, chill artist. <laughs> like. If I could sit home and chill on myself all day, I would do that. <laughs> I have known, I've been known to procrastinate. I'm a procrastinator. So yeah, so I, I wish I had a more A-type personality so I could just go, go, go and not even think about it, not have it be an issue. Um, I do think sometimes that my laid back personality my laid back personality can kind of be a hindrance to all the things I want to do so yes I would definitely be more get up and go the next question is which one of your friends would make the best US president and why so I loved this question because as, as soon as I saw it I immediately knew who I would choose and the person I would choose is my very, very, very dear friend, Brandy Thomas. Um, she's one of my closest friends. Like she knows all my stuff. I don't tell my business to people, <laughs> but Brandy knows my business <laughs> and I trust her with it. Um, but Brandy is an incredible and very talented lawyer and she's a, one of the very short list of people that I completely trust with anything. Um, I think that she could, if need be, juggle the world with a level head. She is very uh, attentive and thoughtful and strong and fair and uh, she can give the kind of advice that you just need without being biased and just her advice is so well thought out the way she handles things like it's hard to explain <laughs> like she's very um empathetic and i said she's fair and i think she'd run this country like a boss like nobody's gonna talk over her <laughs> she will get her point across and I, I just think she could turn she could turn things around and I, I have no doubt about that so be be for president you should run I think you would win you'd be our, a, a wonderful first female president next question is what words of wisdom would you give to your childhood self? I'm going to read my whole answer to this because I don't want to leave anything out. So the, the words of wisdom I'd leave to my childhood self is to go vegan ASAP. Like be born vegan. <laughs> Not that you can change that, but be vegan ASAP. Always be compassionate to everything, every person, and every living being. Do everything in your power not to cause harm to yourself, anything, or anyone. Take incredible care of yourself. Eat well, exercise, self-improve, and read. Read, read, read. Be outside and get as much fresh air as you can. Enjoy and explore the world. Always love yourself no matter what is going on around you. And don't ever hate anything about yourself. At the end of the day, you are all you have, so be good to you. And save your money and travel and see the world. That's what I would tell to little me. All right, that's the last question. We got through it quicker than I thought we would. But anyway, 
That was fun. I hope that helped you guys get to know me a little better. <laughs> I might or might not, if you see it, I said yes, and if you don't, I didn't. I might flash certain uh, of the kind of tag questions you see in the get to know me tags all over the screen. So you'll know like the little things about me, like my favorite color, or my favorite food, or, or all that stuff. So we'll see. It might make the video a little more interesting. Um, I hope you guys like this version of my get to know me. I hope the questions um, really gave you some insight into the way I think and what kind of person I am. I uh, enjoyed answering them and, and racking my brain uh, to pick. I literally printed out like a hundred different questions. Like, I, I, and I hope I picked the best one. I might do another one on another day with some of these other questions. Maybe make it a little series, but don't quote me on that because every time I say I'm gonna do a series, I don't end up doing the series. I get, I get bored with topics really quick. <laughs> But anyway, that's it for today, guys. I'm so glad you joined me. I hope you enjoyed the video, like I said. Um, I will have some more coming here soon. I got a whole list of videos to film, and I'm gonna try to bang them out, especially before the baby comes, because I know I'm probably not gonna be filming anything for a little while. I'll, I'll probably film the birth in a little bit right like after, but it might be a minute until I get acclimated to motherhood <laughs> before I film once she comes, which is going to be in less than two months. So I've been banging out videos so that I could try to keep this consistent schedule. Um, so uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not already so you don't miss anything. Make sure you tap the notification bell next to the subscribe button on the bottom down there. And it will notify you anytime I upload and that way you definitely won't miss it because uh, things tend to get lost in that YouTube universe, but you'll be on point because you're gonna get an email and or a notification drop down on your little phone or whatever kind of notifications you have set up. It's gonna tell you that I posted a video. So click that bell, come back later, talk to you guys soon. I love you, have a wonderful day. <laughs>